This week's episode is sponsored by Hair Replacement Glasgow, men's non-surgical hair replacement. For exceptional value, they use only the best ultra-realistic, non-invasive men's hair systems. You can wash it, style it, play football, go to the gym and even swim with confidence. So if you are looking for an instant transformation with 100% human hair styled exactly the way you want it, then contact Hair Replacement Glasgow for your free consultation. You've been shot over 20 times. I thought 50 cent was lucky getting shot nine times, but you, that's, I've never heard of a story as, as heavy as that to being shot over 20 times and still here to tell the tale. We run in the back one of them pulled out a piece and proceeded to shoot me. I was with my mate on the floor for a bit and then I had to get off. I had to take whatever was there out of the scene so the police didn't find it. Boom, we're on. Today's guest, we've got Manchester's Darrell Daryl Laycock. How are you, brother? I'm good, thank you. First of all, big man, thanks for coming on. You're You've welcome. Got a very interesting story. What have we got here? 19 different prisons, shot over 20 times. Crazy story, mate. I've seen you in Sean Atwood's podcast, so shout out to Shawnee Boy. It's a, it was a very interesting podcast. Um, bit nuts, huh? I've not watched it, but... Um, How you not watch your own stuff? I don't know, I just get a bit embarrassed and cringe stuff. a bit watching your own yeah, shit yeah yeah <laughs> so manchester bad boy let's go right back to the start daza um kind of where it all began for you obviously i'm from moss side i'm born in Hume. born in Hume. um went to manchester a year old moss side sorry not manchester moss side which is like the overspill from Hume. um Grew up in a house full of domestic violence. You know, dad beating mum on a regular basis. My mum left my dad and got with another man for protection. Ended up having a kid with him. My brother Lawrence, a couple of years down the line, he was, his dad was African. Um, he was kidnapped by his dad. His dad come and took him off the street and he wasn't seen for 30 years. Joking. So then, um, so my mum had a problem. All obviously she missed her son and things like that. And there was a lot of drink in the house, mostly my dad. My dad would be drinking, and that's when he'd be violent with my mum. But he would never violent with the kids. But he would hit my mum in front of us. So yeah, he, he was violent towards my mum and. Mum put up with that for years and years. You know, when I was young in primary school, I had to go see child psychologist because I hit somebody with a chair pretty bad. I was only eight years old. And it was like, it was like learnt behaviour, so to speak. And from there, things just spiralled out of control. I used to go and see a child psychologist all the time for years. Um. Then one night, still drink involved. Um, I can't say my dad was a bad person. He's done bad things to my mum that I've found out since, since they both passed over. But I can't say he was a bad person because when he was sober, he was mostly the nicest man you'd ever come across. When he'd had a drink, he was like a devil. Do you know, Jekyll and Hyde. So, yeah, it was bad seeing my mum go through what, she went through. Um, Do you know what your dad's upbringing was like? Pardon? What was your dad's upbringing? Do you my, know? My dad was um, born in Jamaica and come over here, part of the Windrush generation. Do you know? And I know my dad seeing his dad beat my, my gran. Yeah. Do you know? My gran was beat until she was blinded or semi-blind, but she's fully blind now. My grand's outlived my mum and my dad, and my granddad, she's still alive. I thought she must be a wee warrior. Yeah, but 
Yeah, so he's like, I don't know if it's learnt behaviour or if it's... Yeah, as that's why I ask, because you'll tend to see it passes down from generation to generation, and that's where your violence probably comes from, the trauma that you've seen, accepting maybe that it's okay to fight or do whatever, the frustration. So that's when your life probably started spiralling. Yeah, like, like I was saying, learnt behaviour. I was very violent, very angry as a child, and I was very... It was funny, but I was angry. It was obviously now looking back, obviously it was trauma that I was dealing with, but I was dealing with it myself and lashing out at other people. Um, so, cut a long story short, I went to secondary from primary school, went to secondary school. Um, after the second day of being in secondary school, I was excluded for eating a teacher because she put her hand on me, so I just thought nobody puts her hand on me. So I uh, excluded, cut a long story short. Not long after that, my dad was still beating my mum. He was in and out of our lives, in and out of our lives, and he was still beating my mum, and my mum ended up stabbing my dad. Do you know? So I'm not blaming my mum for my violence because I chose to do that kind of thing. So. I went on the streets at early age, 12, 13, was selling crack and heroin at them ages. But everybody thought I was selling it as part of a gang and all that, I wasn't. I was, I had a cousin who was a smackhead and I was doing it with him first. And yeah, and then I went onto the streets and it, it was like to escape what was happening at home, you know, seeing what was happening. Uh, what was happening there, the drink, the drink, the drink, the smoking, the smoking, and so on. And I was on the streets with a group of friends. Some of them went through similar things. Some of them went through nothing, but we all was on the estate. Uh -huh. So by the ages of 14 as well, you were given a gun? Yeah, some elder person. He was, he was supposed to be the the man, but later on we found out him to be an idiot and he gave me a gun, made me mind a gun, asked me to use the gun on a specific time, at a specific time as a specific person. I didn't, but he still left me with the gun. What was what were you to do with the gun? He asked me to shoot somebody. Someone was going to come and meet him in a pub and he asked me to shoot the person. Did they show up? No, they didn't show nah. up, but I wouldn't have shot him anyways, not that person. Nah. You so you started selling crack on the streets, started dabbling, not just in drugs, but guns. Um, yeah. What age did you start really getting into the violence? Right, when I was like 15, loads of fisticuffs, 16, knives, guns, 17, There'd been a couple of murders. When I was 17, my mate was killed in a bakery. I was with him, and that's that's when I vowed to avenge his death. And not only did I vow to avenge his death, I, I pledged my loyalty to him from a young age. You know, nowadays you don't get the kind of loyalty that you had back then. Yeah. People sell you out now. Everybody's old talk. Won't back you up and things like that. So then it started. And throughout the years, I lost over 30 friends and family and over 60 people that have been murdered. Most people don't know. Six people that have died through natural causes. Mm -hmm. So what I've been dealing with this all my life. Yeah, trauma, constant pain, mm. constant. It's worry as well, no matter how tough you can act or how many guns you can have in your fucking inside trouser pocket. It's, um, it's a trauma and the, what if it's me next or... Then you've kind of you see you've got two ways either have the death wish and not give a fuck or you grow the conscience and try to stay, you try to change. But you've listen, mate, you're you're doing massive things. We'll touch on that in a bit. But to make the changes and make the sacrifices to change, it takes massive respect. So I take my hat off to you. When your friend got murdered in the bakers, you were there that day. Yeah, yeah. What was that story? Um, we went to get some food, some toasties. Um, we seen some people from another estate, they come towards us, we are running the back, one of them pulled out a piece and proceeded to shoot me. Mate, they left the scene 
I was with my mate on the floor for a bit and then I had to get off. I had to get off because I had to remove, I had to take whatever was there out of the scene so the police didn't find it. I'm not going to say who had it, whether I had it, my mate or somebody else, but I had to flee the scene. I left my mate with my other mates. Mum, he was happen to pass him by and she stayed with him, but he was dead before I'd left. What age were you then? I was 17. So after that, what was your head like? You know what? People, people say that you forget after time, but you don't forget after time. Every day, every day, even up to now, I think to myself, if we would have went a different way to that place, the dynamics of life would have been different. You know, it might not have happened, it might have been me, but my head was fucked in my head. I still, still think it. about it, yeah. Yeah, and you will, and, and I've said that many times, but they say time's a healer, but it's not. You learn to adapt to the pain. You learn to adapt to what's happened and you'll repeat it. What if I went this way? What if I could save him? What if I could... There's, there's no point, but you've got what you've got to understand now, all the shit that you went through in the past, now you're speaking at schools, now you're helping other kids not to make the same mistakes that you've made or your friends have made. So you've got to give yourself credit. And it is difficult because we can numb the pain, whether it's drugs, women, gambling, to masks, whatever the fuck demons were fighting. So in your life after that, what? how did that affect your life? It just went hectic after that. Obviously... There'd been a death, there'd been a couple of deaths, there'd been a death before him and all that from opposing sides. And yeah, it just got hectic. On site, you see somebody and it goes off. You know, obviously I can't say too much because the police might investigate yeah, because, you know, it's not, every, no case is ever closed, is it? But there was tit for tat shootings for years and years and numerous murders, do you know? to do with the old my side issues. So it was like a tough war? People fighting over postcodes? Nothing to do with postcodes. It's nothing to do it's with postcodes because for the simple reason, we're all from the same postcode. Yeah. <laughs> do you know, we all went to school with mm -hmm. each other, but... And nobody owns any property there either? Nah, fighting over it's definitely not postcodes, but what it is, elder statesmen, elder elders was having beef and then everybody grew into it and followed picked a side and so on. But back when we was young, we all used to go to the same schools, go round with each other, get on. Do you know? But we listen to elder people. And nowadays you get kids listening to elder people do this and do that. Mm -hmm. So I go around and tell them, it's not worth it, you yeah. know? Because the elder people at some point, they run off and leave you. And then they've caused all this chaos and they've run off with whatever they've made to another city or another town, and you're left, to you know. To pick up the pieces. And it's survival, isn't it? You're trying to survive because mm -hmm. ne not necessarily you want to kill everybody, but you want to survive. Mm -hmm. It's Kill or be killed. So to speak, yeah. Yeah. You've been shot over 20 times. I thought 50 Cent was lucky getting shot nine times, but you, that's, I've never heard the, a story as... As heavy as that to being shot over 20 times and still here to tell the tale. Do you feel blessed? Even yeah, though all the shit I, you've went through, do you yeah, feel blessed to be here? I definitely feel blessed and I'm grateful every day that I wake up. I might not have the most money. I might be going through a bit of depression. I might not be feeling good, but every morning I'm thankful that I'm still alive. I thought that my mum would outlive me, do you know, because of the circles I kept and the things that I was doing. So I appreciate that I'm here and I do feel blessed because I'm not I'm not big headed or anything, but there's nobody been shot more times than me and survived. So I believe that I was put on this earth for a reason. I was shot once one night I was riding through a park and the ironic thing is I'd I'd had something on me earlier and I put it on and then about ten minutes later I got ride through this park. When I say I had something on me, I meant I was armed and dangerous and I put it away for the night. I was on my way somewhere and riding a bike through a dark park and I seen someone jump out from behind a tree. So I let go of the bikes, turned around and started running and heard the shots and 
one of the shots caught me underneath my foot and come out the side of my leg. That was the first time. So I got round two corners and I couldn't get round no more. But that person had fucked off by that time, excuse my language. So yeah, that's the first time I got shot. Done some jail in between the four and a half year sentence. Done a, after I got shot, um, I was arrested for a couple of attempted murders and a conspiracy to murder. Um, charged, went to trial, found not guilty. Found guilty of possession with intent and supply, class A's. Um, was given four years for the class A's and for two bullets I got six months consecutive which is six months on top of the four years. Usually you get concurrent, but yeah. obviously I was building up a bit reputation. of a reputation, intelligence and so on. So yeah, I was in jail. Whilst I was in jail, obviously it doesn't stop. People think you might go to jail and the beef doesn't stop. So it was tick for tat fighting. Fighting inside the prison. Inside the jail, yeah, because there was a, there was a ruling saying that people from my estate and other estates that I had conflict with um, wouldn't be on the same wing. And they kind of like kept it like that, but they can't control the visits. So you'd go to visits or you'd go to the gym, not that I go to the gym nowadays, <laughs> but you'd bump into people. Do you know, you'd bump into people and it'd go off, do you know? Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you've lost friends to murder, you're gonna always have anger, mm -hmm. do you know? A lot of people can control anger and think, I'll wait till I get outside, but I wasn't one of them people. Anytime I saw any of them in jail, it was on, do you know? Most of them tried it with me, but some people didn't, do you know? Because you know, you know yourself, people, some people ain't nothing without the tool without a blade or anything. Without team handy, 10 you know, of them, but, 15 of them. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter, 10, 15 of them. From what I seen that day when my mate was killed, I would rush no matter how many. Not caring if you died? No, this I'm talking about in jail, fist yeah. to fist. No, I, wasn't, I wouldn't care mm -hmm. if I died. I was always prepared for death. Did you ever go and see anybody in the jail, psychologists or mental no. health, nothing? No, Not because at that time. you know what it is? As men, pride... You know that people say pride kills, and it really does because we don't open up our feelings. Whereas now I will tell the people I was suffering, mm -hmm. do you know? But I had to this reputation to keep and so on. I was with a girl at this pub, like met her at the pub, got drunk, walking home, got about, I'd say about 300 meters from where I lived, but it, you know, the states and um, some people jumped out from behind her wall and was holding guns out to me and I walked towards him and says what what obviously the drink the drink made me brave do you know the drink made me really brave and I shouldn't have done it but every time I've been shot I've been going towards the people so most of it that's why it saved me so I saying what 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 the fuck and that's when I felt all oh, the bullets start hitting me my arms was peppered up my chest, my back, I threw the girl on the floor. She was shot in the chest and I, and I lay on top of her and took some more bullets. And that was that situation. I managed to get up off the floor and get to my mate's dad's house. He was just round the corner and he refused to let me in because he didn't want no repercussions at his house. Somebody come in a car and took me to the hospital gets to the hospital and they're rushing me down to theatre. I'm responsible there by this time. And some cheeky cunt of a copper, excuse my language, went like that. Daryl, do me a favour. What? He was like, that gives you lottery numbers. Like to say, I was lucky to be alive. And that was that time. That was not long after I'd been released from a four and a half year sentence when I got shot that time. After that, went back to jail for a stabbing. I was charged with stabbing some kid and making him sing and dance to Spice Girl music. And went to trial. 
I got not guilty under the ASA Evidence Act law because he aired that I was called Daryl Laycock. He didn't know I was called Daryl Laycock. Someone told him after the fact. So my barrister, who I'm still in touch with, still great friends with now, um, brought loads of case files about ASA Evidence and the judge threw it out, ordered the jury to find me not guilty. Get out, back on the graft, back doing what I did. Um, one night, stood outside a club, talking to some girls. My mate was, I thought my mate was shouting, come here, but he wasn't, he was shouting, go away. Do you know, but I started walking towards my mate and obviously he was near the people who shot me on the last occasion. So they, they shot me once in my left leg and that that done me bad, that, because all the other times I was only in a week, two weeks, when I got shot in my leg, I got that thing called MRSA, MRSA. So I was in hospital for nine months with a leg shot and that was the end of the shootings. It wasn't the end of the shootings. People tried to shoot me after that. Have you ever think to yourself, I'm just going to get to, to fuck, man? Do you know what I mean? It's just a hell of a lot of times to be somebody having a pop at you. Was there ever a time to say, right, I'm out, I'm off? No, nah, you know what it is? Because I always see my mate lay on the floor, so it was always in my head. To get I revenge? Had to, I had to avenge his death. Do you know, and I tried plenty of times, obviously throughout the years, I was charged with numerous attempted murders as question on loads of actual murders, charged with a murder, cleared of a murder and so on. But it doesn't, it doesn't make it right, you know. Nowadays, people ain't got the same loyalty that they had back then, do you know. Mm -hmm. People sell you out. And yeah, I was charged with murder, conspiracy to murder and things like that. And I never thought that I'd survive, but that, because of my loyalty, yeah. I thought that was the way to go. But yeah. nowadays, I see, I would, I'm never, not that person. Yeah. Do you it, never, know? it never ends, does it? If you go down that route, just acting for revenge, because you get shot in the head as well. Yeah, when I got shot 27 times, a bullet glanced off my head. And um, that's the only one I was worried about, to be honest. It wasn't hurting as much of my arms and my shoulder and my back. I was, when I was laying on the floor before I got up, blood was rolling down my eye. So that's what I was thinking that that had killed me, that one. Did your girlfriend get shot as well? Yeah, the girl that I was with, she got shot in her chest and her hand. Um, she wasn't my girlfriend. We was kind of like on a date, kind of like going home to... Just shagging. Well, I didn't even get to get there. <laughs> what? Oh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, she was shot on a, she was shot in her chest and her hand. But I let, shit. I threw her on the floor and lay on top of her. You know, Did I she didn't. Survive though. Yeah, I didn't know that I'd done that until afterwards when she let me know. Do you know because the mentality of people that back then would pull them onto you, wouldn't they? Yeah. You know, but I did it and she survived. I survived and. I live to tell the tale. Have you ever spoke to her sons? About two years ago, I bumped into some girl and she was talking to me and I didn't even have a clue it was there, to be honest. And then she just went, I was, I was talking to her about five minutes, she went, you don't know who I am, do you? And I went, no, I don't. And she told me, I, I was so ashamed. Fuck's sake, Dara, how, did, how could you not remember? So, so ashamed, honestly. But it is what it is, because don't forget, it's like, 20 odd years yeah. and people change. change yeah 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 because back then she was most of one of the best looking women mm -hmm. ever and she changed trust me that's what happens when you get fucking shot i'd imagine so your reputation as well with the ladies is pretty high down here you keep seeing about ladies man was that because of the reputation you had down here? Or was yeah. It just because yeah. Yeah. You spent a lot of time in prison, so you came out. You made the most of it. No, I had a. I I was a ladies' man. Uh, it was, it was like a drug, bad addiction. <laughs> I had. I, I've got. I've got a mate, an ex mate, who's doing life sentence now, and he used to always say, "You're gonna get killed going to a woman's house." Hmm. 
do you know easy target yeah because I was always women but women they're the greatest thing on the earth the planet and things like that but where they'll go about women women a lot of women are shallow a lot of women didn't want me for me mm -hmm. didn't want me for my looks it was either my eyes because I've got particular colour eyes for a mixed race lad <laughs> uh, or because of the reputation do you know nobody wants a fat guy <laughs> do you know um, but the, being a fat guy saved me innit it's like when I got stabbed I got stabbed seven times and um the doctor says you survive because you're fat. <laughs> Do you know? Because you got more blubber and yeah. more blood than anybody yeah, 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 yeah. else. So you've been saved. That saved your life. Yeah. Fuck's sake, that all the, the wars you've been through. So PTSD. You've got PTSD. Yeah, PTSD. I suffer. I suffer. I'm not gonna say I suffer bad. Sometimes I suffer. Sometimes I'm alright for months, and then yeah. it, it hits me. What triggers it? Do you think? Memories, back thinking yeah. in the past. Yeah, yeah. The brain can be a powerful thing, and I, I speak it quite, I speak about it quite a lot. When you think about trauma in the past, the brain will release the chemical of the trauma you'd felt, whether it's ten or twenty years ago, it will release that emotion. So the brain doesn't know what's what's real or what's fake. So if you think about even talking about it now, it'll probably drain you because it'll bring back a lot of emotion and it'll release a lot of chemicals to the emotion that you'd felt that day. So it doesn't really know. So it's yeah. but you can rewire the brain. You can change. And for everything you've went through, Daza, you ended up being involved in a BAFTA winning film, a BAFTA winning documentary. Yeah, I've done a, I've done a lot of TV work over the years. What's the documentary? It's called Gun, Gun Number Six. Gun Number Six. It's like a docudrama. And it won a BAFTA. Yeah, um, it won a BAFTA last year, two thousand and nineteen. Um, it's about a gun, the journey of a gun in Birmingham, the most deadliest gun in Birmingham, where eleven people are doing life sentences for this gun. It's killed three people and injured numerous others and it's never been recovered. So there's people doing life sentences and the, the gun's still out there. So I got involved in that because they used rehabilitated ex-offenders with gun convictions. So me and a few other people was involved with it and it happened to win a BAFTA and it been nominated for loads of other stuff, but it's not won no other stuff, but I don't do what I do to win awards because I win a, I've won a few awards over the years, but I do it to spare parents from burying the kids, yeah. kids thinking their mates are gonna die for them and go to jail for the rest of their life. So I, I kind of like go around and do work all over the country, schools and so on to make people aware the reality of crime, jail, and so on. Mm -hmm. So everything has that, I always say it, but the ripple effect where it's not just you, it feels the pain, it's also the victims, it's everybody that goes through the pain and the trauma and the, the post-traumatic stress Is through their life, do you know what I mean? But everything you went through, you ended up in Buckingham Palace with Prince Charles, sharing yeah. a table with him. Yeah, after coming out of jail and doing all that stuff, getting stabbed, I started working in the schools, I wasn't allowed in Manchester when I come out of jail in 2011. Um, Greater Manchester Police and Merseyside Police said I was the most dangerous person in the northwest of England. So I was put in one of them bail hostels for nine months um, where my movements were restricted. I wasn't allowed to associate with certain people. And yeah, but um, a lot of people think I shouldn't have been put there and it was wrong for me not being allowed in Manchester for two and a half years, but I believe it was right because if I didn't get arrested and I didn't do what I'd done, they wouldn't have been able to do that. But the arrest come after I went to Liverpool in 2008, 16th of August, 2008. I was caught with 500 bullets. So if I would have got back to Manchester, that was mostly the best thing to ever happen to me. If I would have got back to Manchester with them 500 bullets, people would have got killed. There's no two ways about it. I'm not saying I would have killed them. Whoever I would have distributed them to might have killed somebody. But 500 bullets on the streets of my side, Manchester, there's bound to be deaths. A bloodbath. Definitely. So 
going through all that, the stabbings, the shootings, prison, the trauma that you've been through from a young boy, what was the catalyst for you to make the changes, to become a better person, to try and help others? You know what, I don't really go into it, but something happened to a family member and it, I just believe... And I promised the family member, I promised my mum that I wouldn't go back to jail. Do you know? I can't really go into it because I don't want to bring it back up and for them to feel like they're being victimised off somebody. But, yeah, I had to do it for my family because when you think about it, I was willing to kill and be killed for my friends. And when I was in jail, they didn't look after me. Mm -hmm. Do you know? And I'd done a lot for people. And I had to think to myself, my family mean more to me than anything. But when you're in that rigmarole of being on the road, living the high life and things like that, you think everything's cushy. And when you go to jail, you'll know yourself. You see no your friends cares. are in, on one hand. Mm -hmm. Do you know? So, yeah. What's your circle link now? My circle... I don't really associate with many people because I just work, work, work. I go around the country working with kids in schools. 90% of it, over 90% of it, most probably free. Um, I have some good friends, good friends who support me. The twins, as you can see. Yeah. I've got Shout that. out to them. We'll leave the link in the description I, for the clothing range. I've got, I've, they look after me. They support anything that I do. I've got a mate um, who's got a security company. He supports what I do. Um, proper looks after me and so on but I don't really associate with many people now do you know because I don't really trust no more after going through all that do you know a lot of people think they'll back up their mates and kill for the mates but whenever I got shot or stabbed nobody didn't back me up it was me that had to retaliate and do whatever do you know what I mean everyone claims to be this and claims to be that but they're not mm -hmm. you ever wrote a book? No, I'm about to, I am, I have started writing a book a few times and I've started writing one recently in the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. um, Get it done, man. That's a massive opportunity. Write your book, tell your story, turn it maybe into a documentary or a film. I know a few publishers now. The amount of books I've got in my house, Darrow, sign books, caught by fucking guests is, yeah, is next level, man. So I can yeah, have a fucking you, library. That's you though, innit? Do you that's, know what I mean? That's you, but yeah, I just want to get the... I just want to get the record straight and put it out there. This mm -hmm. life ain't worth it yeah. because who else would get shot 27 times and survive? Stabbed seven times. Yeah, and shot once on two occasions. Mm -hmm. Do you know? There's nobody, do you know? I'm not being big headed or being bullish or anything, but I must have been sent here to do what I do because I go in schools and I do yeah. make a difference. Sometimes it's cheesy, but some people are chosen in life to go to the darkest places because if nobody went to the dark, dark places, then nobody would create change to try and better people's lives, to try and understand that, listen, a life of crime is a fucking mugs game. Everybody I've now grew up are dead or in the jail, and the majority are dead, which is scary. And it's a constant battle. It's just ego. Ego's just something that we create in our mind, who we should be. And if somebody kind of goes against that, then the back can go up. But for you to be through what you've went through is... I've had many nutcases on this podcast, if I'm honest, Daz, about your stories is fucking up there with the, is the craziest, if I'm honest. And I've had, I've heard some grim stories, but to went, being through what you've went through and to be where you are now, man, again, I said I said at the start, I take my heart off to you, brother, and you, you're doing amazing. You know what, I just try, I just try, because I don't want to see mothers burying the kids. I don't want to see kids burying the brothers, burying the sisters. Do you know, I just want kids to live in peace because we go and celebrate when somebody dies, saying rest in peace. We should be celebrating the life when they're living. Yeah. Do you know? Most kids go and visit their mates a couple of times after they die in a cemetery. They they never, they mm. never go on. They don't know the the things that have happened to me. I could go on forever. It's like I buried my mum. I buried my mum five years ago. Not buried. She got cremated. But at a funeral. Somebody was shot at my mum's funeral. Do you know? But it's all it all starts from the beginning. If you do bad. Bad things will happen. Karma. Karma, definitely. If you do good, good things can happen. Since I've been doing good stuff, I've, you know what, I've had an amazing life. Not necessarily amazing riches, but I don't have to look over my shoulder no more. Do you know? I can walk anywhere I want with no worry whatsoever. The only thing that scares me in this world, you know, it's not a man with a gun. 
Do you know, I've never been scared of a man with a gun, a man with a knife. And that's not me being big headed. It's just the way I was brought up. That was the life. I was either going to live or I was going to die. The only thing that scares me is cats. <laughs> Do you know, cats and muffs. <laughs> Cats. For a man that likes the pussy as well, I'm sure yeah. I'm, I'm surprised at that digging. Yeah, dude, that's a different kind of pussy. But yeah, cats and muffs, you know. Uh-huh. So yeah, but yeah, like I said, I've won a few awards. I've I've been to Buckingham Palace, you know. But I don't do it all for that. I do it to make a difference and show people mm-hmm. that if you do bad, bad will come back. And you know, when you're lying on that hospital bed or you're not stretching, you're getting put in a fridge you're there on your own you live on your own you're born on your own you die on your own do you know my mum used to say Daryl you're never going to get killed and I I used to think oh you're chatting rubbish and she went I'm the person that brought you into this world so I'm the only one with the right to take you out of this world and it always stayed in my mind do you know so Mm -hmm. yeah but you got there man you're you're fighting fighting for change which is a great thing you're trying to change so when you were at your your mum's funeral who got shot um my friend my friend got shot was it planned or was it after the after party just everybody kicking it's just, off it's just at the after party it was definitely it definitely planned it was definitely planned i'm not going to go too much into mm-hmm. it but you know it was planned and it it happened i promised my mum and everybody i wouldn't go back to jail so i didn't retaliate and that thing called karma mm-hmm. You know, karma caught up with a couple of the people, you know. Because there's a, there's a code, man, not if you know, do you know what I mean? Not women are... Uh, codes, codes, went out of the, codes went out of the window years ago. Codes went out of the window years ago. Back in 92, 93, someone tried to shoot me outside my mum's house and ended up shooting through the window where my mum was sat with a friend. Do you know, that's when colds went out the window. Mm-hmm. Not caring if kids and girlfriends were in the house. Yeah, nah, but the same person, he was, he was apprehended the next day. Not apprehended, uh, he was, people seeked out retaliation and he was shot a few times in his chest. He survived and I'm thankful that he survived, do you know, because looking back then, I don't want to have been the person to face his kids later on in life. Mm -hmm. Do you know? So anybody who's died, whether it's from my estate or the opposite estate, I've known him pretty well at some point in our lives. And, you know, I just don't want them. When I go and pass a message to the school kids, I tell them straight, these guys never died in vain. I'm keeping their name alive, do you know, in order to help you. But I've got blood on my hands still. I feel guilty when a kid gets stabbed in Manchester, especially in my area, I feel like I should have done more, you know, because if I didn't do what i done back in the day, the dynamics of life, it, yeah. Mm-hmm. You so, can't think that way because now you're trying to make the change and you've got to understand people bring it down from their grandparents, father, brothers. It's not just you, it's been a whole bunch of boys there just trying to make a name for themselves. And you'll tend to see a lot of people who aren't of you who are involved in a life of crime, you tend to see they were bullied or abused when they were younger. There's some sort of trauma that triggers that anger and frustration where they want to mask the pain, they'll mask it where it's holding a gun or having a knife or going to fight because that gives them a sense of power that they've got some power. But really, it's a sense of insecurity. He's the loudest man and it's, everybody says it as the weakest man. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's a bravado. So I just go around and doing, trying to do my bit. Like I say, I don't get no government funded or anything. My mate who owns base security there, he's... So he's just he's basically plugging his pals. Hang me, so I'll just plug it. So it's uh, base security, it's services, is that Manchester, Daza? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, 0161 We'll plug it. What's, um, what does this do? Um, they support me, they help fund going yeah. into schools, but twins, they're my principal yeah. sponsors. Good. We we'll put all the that? links to their stuff in that as well there, Daryl. Yeah. Because what you're doing, mate, is phenomenal, honestly. You should be proud of yourself. So you should. You should be proud of yourself. So see the all your beef in the past, is that squash with other people or are you still worried that? Nah, I don't worry about nothing. You nah. know you know what? I don't worry about nothing. And to be honest, I've seen I've seen people who shot me before and nothing's happened. And people have seen me 
who have been accused of shooting and nothing's happened. Mm. Do you know? It's, it's, it is what it is. It, it's all played out, in it? And yeah. People realise when they get old, it's not worth it. And don't get me wrong, somebody could try something at any point, but I doubt they will. Do you know? Because nobody wants to go to jail for the rest of their life. Mm. Back in the day, back in the 90s, you could go, jail, you could go and kill somebody and you won't even get a knock on the door. Do you know what I mean? But nowadays, with the cameras and people out there, you're not you're gonna go to jail. Nobody wants to go to jail because mm -hmm. you know yourself. Everyone's a big man on road, but when they go to jail, yeah. it's a different thing. Yeah, the weakest, men, the, the strongest men become the weakest. Exactly, and if you can't read and write, you're in trouble. Yeah. I mean, you tend to see a lot of people in the jail can't read or write. But no, but I mean read and write yeah, as yeah, in yeah, fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was, <laughs> <but Yeah>. was, <laughs> was going to say, I spoke to a big guy today who was in the jail and he couldn't read and write. A lot yeah. of the people who have in the jail for the past couldn't read and write. Yeah. I know you were saying fight. Yeah, but yeah, but, yeah, but you know, saying that, you're saying about people can't generally yeah. read and write. When I was in Winston Green, I used to teach people how to read and write. Mm -hmm. Do you know? And um, I don't know. If and you tend to see the figures are high in prison, the amount of people who can't read or write. Yeah, very much. And when I was in Winston Green, going back to that that time, uh, I ended up stabbing somebody in there. Some guy called me a screw boy. I'd been moved around all the jails and I thought to myself, I'm going to calm down here. Um, so I got an education, orderly's job, and I was collecting registered. And some guy called me a screw boy. And so, you know yourself, it's like calling somebody a nonce, yeah. do you know? So I stuck a pen in his neck and in his cheek at the time. I was seeing it. I was having an affair with a teacher there and she was teaching the class. In prison? Yeah. So she stuck up for me when it come to me adjudication. The guy called me a screw boy and he didn't expect me to retaliate like that. But... He phoned the police, he got the jail to phone the police on me. Yeah, he's calling me a screw boy. But I'm not gonna glorify it. I'm just letting kids know that things like that do happen. Mm -hmm. People do get stabbed in jail. People get killed in jail. People commit suicide in jail. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of deaths in jail that go, that don't get spoken about enough in my eyes. Exactly. Um, What's your longest sentence, prison sentence? Um, I got an eight year sentence. My DNA was found on a gun. In Liverpool, I live in Manchester. Bit bizarre, but the gun apparently had some history to me. But my DNA wasn't a full copy DNA. It was called a LCN DNA, low copy number. Whereas the people who did the Omar bombing years ago had the same DNA. And they was found not guilty. But obviously, because of your reputation, your intelligence and so on. But you know what? I'm not going to harp on about guns and DNA and being innocent and all that because I've been guilty of many of things and got away, away with it. Yeah. Do you know? Mm -hmm. It's like it's just an occupational hazard, people yeah. might say. Comes with a territory. Exactly, because if you get wrongly convicted of something, you get wrongly convicted of something, mm -hmm. people will complain, but I'm not one of them people to complain for the simple reason. Every night that I got away with a crime, I didn't go and knock on the police station and say, arrest me mm -hmm. because I've done this. Do you know? So... It's just. Did you like fighting? Did you get a buzz from it? Did you get a kick from it? No, I, when I used to, when I used to carry my gun, and uh, I used to let it off, I used to get an adrenaline rush. Yeah, the buzz. Yeah, and I'd been known, or been accused, or been alleged to have let off a gun quite a few times. One time, um, I was at a club in town. I can't admit to anything, but I was I was at a club in town and um that that singer Gabriel was there. It was called the X Club. Dreams King. That's come what she was singing, mama. but it went off in there and you know it it become a bit of a nightmare. There was a shootout in a club and it was it's alleged that it was the first ever shootout in a club between two gang members or two people from opposing sides and it's alleged that I was an instigator but it, it's just an allegation yeah. and it? it's not sounds it, like something for the fucking wild wild west man that's that shit you hear about in the Bronx and it, it's mad because when it was happening I remember it's clear as day 
There was people just sat there. This is when you could smoke in clubs. These people just sat there and these two people shooting at each other and not moving, just stood there and sat down on the stairs smoking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so through all that, Daryl, everything you've went through, the stories, what's your plans for the future? Where do you see yourself? What do you think you'll do? My plans for the future is just still doing what I do in schools, colleges, universities, youth clubs. I need to try and reduce these deaths on the streets because you know yourself, knife crime, youth violence has gone through the roof. And if I don't do it, nobody's gonna do it. Mm-hmm. So I think everybody has to come together. People like me with a bad with a bad past lived experience need to go into schools and educate. If they want to make money off it, they can make money off it. Do you know, but I don't do it to make money, I do it to make a difference. So um yeah, I'm, I'm going back down the school route. Um I do a lot I do a lot of school work. This week I've been in Carlisle, Burnley, Sandbach. Um also there's talks about there's talks about doing my life story. Mm-hmm. There's talks um there's a publication company that wanna to speak to me. Possibly one of the biggest publication companies in the world. But yeah, if I do public pub, publish a book, I'm also going to publish it myself. Good on you. And uh, like I say, if you need any publishers or that, I can put you on to a few people and you can speak to them. You've got to be careful because there's people trying to fuck your left, right, and centre. Exactly, and that that's industry, brother. exactly. A lot of times people want to do life story, but not giving it the editorial rights to me. Yeah. Do you know? You so want to take full control. It's your story. It's your life. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've got something coming out on the 27th of January. It's called Crime Are We Tough Enough? Part of, as I do some work on TV with my barrister, my ex-barrister who used to defend me. We're still very close. So the future, I'm not going to say the future's bright, but I want to make a bright future mm-hmm. for youngsters. Why were you around so many prisons? Why were you in 19 different prisons? Because of the trouble you were causing? Or yeah, I, I was anti-authoritarian, wasn't I? So fighting the screws? Not necessarily fighting the screws. Screws was getting buckets of shit thrown over them and things <laughs> like that. Nothing to do with me. But it was alleged that I used to kind of like control certain aspects of the jail, like the drug supply in certain jails. Mm-hmm. And with drug supply come addicts willing to throw shit over people and piss and yeah, so fighting as well. They just couldn't, they just couldn't contain me. They couldn't control me whatsoever. But I thought I could beat the system. No, the system does. system nah. can't be beaten. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's like I go into schools and I tell youngsters the system can't be beaten on the out or on the in. Do you know? Mm-hmm. Because rules and regulations are there to keep us safe, you know, especially in school. So, and some of them 19 time, 19 jails I went to, I went to some of them four or five times, going back and forth because they wouldn't have me, do you know, <laughs> staying in one somewhere Fucking two pissed. days, five days. Pissed. Do you know? But you know yourself that when you go to jail and you've got a reputation, you got people from other cities with reputations trying it but you've also got screws trying it Mm -hmm. do you know try to test you yeah most screws wouldn't but you always get the one when he's backed up with 20 30 people Tom Hardy as well you met at Buckingham Palace yeah he was there as well how did they all treat you everyone was all right with me Mm -hmm. you know what everybody was shocked at I survived what I've survived do you know everyone it was nice everybody was respectful mm-hmm. and things like that is mad because we started obviously Clarence House is a is a Buckingham Palace it's it's the Queen Mother's the Queen Mother's residence won it and um, that was my mum's favourite royal so I took some of my mum's locks of hair and just dropped them all around mm-hmm. you know around there so yeah it was good so your story, Daryl, is like I said before, it's fucking nuts, man. It's nuts, but you should be proud of yourself. Do you feel 
How do you how do you look at yourself now? Do you feel proud of what you're doing? Or no, I you don't, still put you know, yourself you know, down. You know, I, I still put myself down. Sometimes I feel, feel proud, but sometimes I feel I've not done enough mm -hmm. because I was willing to take people's lives. Do you know? Mm -hmm. I was accused of taking people's lives and. Do you go and see anybody now? It's shit, pardon. Do you go and see anybody now, counselling or anything, or speak no, to anybody? No, it's it's shameful. It's shameful. I feel shameful of what I was willing to do in the past, knowing what I do now. Do you know? But the only way I get over it is because everything happens for a reason, and the dynamics of my life have brought me to the place I am today. Mm -hmm. You know, if I didn't get shot on that day, I wouldn't have been here today. So that's how I come to terms with it but I'm not proud sometimes I get a little bit lifted about something but I think I need to do 100,000 people this year within 12 months 100,000 kids educate 100,000 kids and I think I might be proud after that you should be proud and anybody that's willing to make the sacrifices and the changes especially the life you were in it's, eaten, it's very hard to difficult to come out and anybody will tell you that that it's been Involved and a lot of people talk shit. Let's be honest, a lot of people talk the talk but don't really walk it. A lot of people talk shit and I've had a lot of people on the show and people have made changes, but I can see yourself you're wanting to make changes and you're trying to not balance it out, but if you've done wrong in your past, you want to do good because like I say, karma, you do good and you will attract good. Yeah, it's like it's like I've most of it done more bad than anybody in Manchester and I'm not saying that showing off or anything, but people hold it against me, but I've most of it done more good than anybody in Manchester as well. I've worked with over 180,000 people mm -hmm. in eight years, nine years, do you know? So I try to look at the mm. positives that what I've done. So what's your daily routine like now? Uh, it's hectic. No two days are the same. Mm -hmm. I'm in a school, I'm at a kid's home, at foster carers, with social workers, it could every no one day is the same when i leave here now i'm gonna go to a, a semi-independent house and do some shifts there so i'll leave you and i'll go there and i'll be there till sunday mm -hmm. then i'll go on go to the boxing i've got some boxing i'm going to on sunday afternoon then go back there do you know it's not yeah so it's it's different every day yeah it's not a bed of roses but have you got you to keep know, busy yeah I try to keep busy and then it keeps the mental health away doesn't it so mm -hmm. I try to keep busy but not you're not always busy I and don't forget 90% of my work is done for free if it wasn't for the twins and base security and yeah. that I wouldn't be able to get to these places and things like that but you need to start valuing your worth now and putting a, a price on your knowledge and putting your price on I know it's difficult if you want to do good and you feel as if maybe you're trying to help everyone, but you still need to look after you as well and keep you right. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I am, I'm, I'm gonna try and practice. What's your, so, what's your social media as well, so people can, um, can in case anybody's got um, any books or documentaries that you want to get involved in, what's your social media? Um, Instagrams is D W -E I T S N V R two L eight, and it's. The acronyms for D, it's never too late to show people. It's never too late to fix your life up and things like that. My Twitter is DPL2310. Uh, my LinkedIn's Daryl Laycock. Yeah, that's it. You try to grow. You try to. You're going to start doing your own stuff on YouTube. Yeah, I've Build got your own uh, channel. What's your YouTube channel? I think it's called Your Life Matters. Send me the links anyway, and I'll put everything in the yeah. description for people to get involved. You want to do interviews or you want to just tell your own story? Yeah, I do. Not necessarily. I want to do a bit of everything, but mm -hmm. more so it's about raising awareness so our youngsters can see that they can believe, they can achieve, they can do this. You know, instead of having to follow people, going and grafting and all that, there's always, obviously, if there's a bad road, there's a good road. Yeah. Do you know, and a, a lot of our kids... They need empowering and they need confidence. Mm -hmm. They need male role models. Yeah. But, Daryl, for coming on today, big man, and telling your story, I'm, I'm grateful and I, I'm genuinely rooting for you for to keep striving and keep making change. Would you like to finish up on anything? 
No, just thanks for having me. And if you got a longer spot next time, do you know if I wasn't in a rush? Yeah, I'm sure that we we could do something again. Yeah, definitely. Listen, anything you want back on, just let me know, and it's done. Yeah, it's done. Anything new? Because then we could, then I could do like I could put like a timeline of where yeah. everything went. Mm -hmm. Because we're rushing, because we were in Newcastle earlier, so. Had a cut, I guess, then we drove straight here and you've got work, so you need to shoot. Nice one. Absolute pleasure, and I do. I'm wishing you all the best yeah. for the future, brother. God bless. Thanks a Thank lot. Thank you.